In this series, I want to break down what different Forge utilities are doing on your server. My hope is that you can use this information if you're troubleshooting one of these utilities, or maybe if you decide to cancel your Forge subscription and manage your servers on your own, it's going to be important to understand what it's actually doing for you. In this video, we're going to be focusing on their database features. And the primary things that Forge allows you to manage regarding your databases is you can add new databases, remove existing databases, you can also manage your database users. You can create, delete them. Uh, you can indicate which databases they have access to. Basically all of the admin type stuff you would wanna do with your databases, you could do it via the Forge interface. And what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to do all of those things directly with your database system without having to go through Forge. And step one in this process is we need to get your credentials to connect to your database. And we're gonna be connecting as a user called Forge. This is a default user that Forge set up for you when it first provisioned your server, set up your databases, did all of that. Now, if you're unsure what the password is for this Forge database user, you can reset it on your databases page, scroll down and find the section manage database password, and you could set a new password there. Once you know that information, let's switch contacts. I'm gonna bring up my command line program. I'm currently SSH'd into the server. And I want to get into my SQL command line mode so I can start to interact with my databases this way. The way I'm going to do that is with the command MySQL. I'm going to include the user flag and indicate I want to connect as the Forge user. And I'll also include the P flag or the password flag. So when I enter this command, it's going to prompt me for a password. I'll type that in. And there we go. We're at the MySQL command prompt. Or in this case, we're actually running MariaDB, which is just a variation of MySQL. So starting with the basics, the first thing we want to do is see what databases we have on the system. And I'm going to do that with the SQL command show databases. And all of my commands I'm going to terminate with a semicolon. And there we go. There's our list of databases, which uh, should reflect the same thing we see if we look at our databases within Forge. Um, one difference you might note, though, is in this output, there are going to be some databases that you don't see in Forge, things like your MySQL database or your system database. These are basically system level databases. They're not ones that you specifically created, uh, and that's why you don't see them within the Forge interface. In terms of creating new databases, the command for that would be create database. And then you would give your database some name. In this example, I'll just call mine demo. Again, I'll terminate my command with a semicolon. And then I'll use the up arrow to go back to show databases and just confirm that that was created. If I wanted to remove a database, the command would be drop database and then the name of the database. Um, I'm not going to drop this demo though because there's a couple more things I want to do with it. But if I wanted to, that's the command I would run. Beyond showing, creating, and removing databases, the other thing you're going to want to do is manage your database users. Uh, the first command we want to run regarding that, we're going to say select user from mysql.user. This is going to output all of the existing users on this system. And it's doing that by pulling the user information from our user table within our MySQL system database. So there's my list of current users. And this information should correlate with what we see in Forge if we go down under the section database users. Once again, though, in Forge, this list is trimmed up a bit. We're seeing just the users that we created. It is uh, excluding system level users like our MySQL user, our root user, uh, etc. In terms of creating new users, uh, the command for that, let me actually jump to the notes that accompany this video so I can copy the command from there. So we're under the section managing uh, database users. We just output all of our users and then the next command is to create a new user. So let me copy that. And there are two things within this command you'll want to change. The first is the name of the user you're going to be creating, and then also the password to be associated with that user. Uh, because this is just an example, I'm going to be deleting this after this video. I'm just going to go with the defaults. I am creating a user here called demo admin. The idea being this user is going to be attached to that demo database that I just created. And then uh, I'll just leave it as the default password. Obviously, in a real world situation, you would want a more sec uh, secure password here. Uh, but this is good for this example, so I'm going to run that. And then I'll just cycle back to that select user command and re-output my list of users. And perfect, there's my new demo admin user. After you create a user, you typically want to specify which of the databases that user should have access to. And again, I'll go back to the notes to get the command for this. Uh, we're going to run a grant command, and we want to specify what privileges we want to be granting. In this case, I'm saying all privileges. 
Um, if you wanted to restrict this, let's say you wanted a user to only have read access to a database, you could modify this command. Um, and I don't have it currently in the notes, but I will update this with a link to the documentation for the grant command so that if you wanted to fine tune this a little bit, uh, you could follow that documentation and learn more about that. Uh, but for this example, I'm good with all privileges. Uh, we're going to say on the name of the database we want to be granting these privileges uh, to. And then the period asterisk here is basically saying this needs to apply to all tables that are going to exist or exist within this database. And then fi uh, finally, we want to specify what user we're granting these privileges to. So I'm going to copy this and run it as written. Of course, in your case, you would want to update the name of the database you're granting privileges to, as well as the name of the user. Related to users and privileges, there's a couple commands you can run to see which users have access to particular databases. And again, going back to the notes, uh, the commands we want to focus on here, uh, you could run show grants for a particular user. This is going to show you what privileges they have. Or if you want to look at it from a database perspective, we have a select command where we can select the users that have privileges with a given database. And let's go ahead and try that one out. So I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to run that. It's uh, pre-filled with my demo database. I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, note that this command, rather than terminating it with a semicolon, we're terminating it with a backslash G. Uh, and the reason we're going to do this is because this is going to yield a bunch of information. And rather than showing it in this long horizontal table, you can see it's showing it in this vertical format, which just makes it a little bit more legible. Um, if we contrast that to if we had done a semicolon, you can see how it just kind of blurs together on the screen. It's a little hard to read. So if you ever see a backslash G in SQL commands, that's what it's doing. And from this output, we see the expected results, which is there is a single user that has privileges for this particular database. So uh, that reflects that grant command we had written a moment ago to give that user access. All right, now finally, to wrap up the management tasks we do with users, if we wanted to delete a user, the command for that is going to be drop user and then the username. And with that, that should cover all of our bases in terms of manually handling all of the things that Forge handles when it comes to databases on your system, from adding databases to removing them to also working with your database users and uh, indicating which databases they have access to. So hopefully this information is of use to you, especially if you're thinking about unsubscribing from Forge or perhaps if you just want a better understanding of what it's doing on your server. For more videos like this where I dig into different Forge utilities, check out the playlist Forge Under the Hood, which I'll include a link to on the screen right now. And if there's a particular utility that I haven't covered yet that you want to see, uh, feel free to submit that as a suggestion in the comments below.